Now, let's say a real estate agent, whether they're new to the business or they've been doing it for 20 years and they've got an established business, if they want to really open the conversation and take action today by engaging new construction in their market, what would be the first step? Are they going to pick up the phone? Are they going to drive by the office? Are they going to do a little bit of research? Are they going to contact the Rolodex? What would you recommend? <laughs> I think we're live. Welcome, welcome, Lab Code agents, to another really great webinar. Um, we have our guest here. Well, first, let me introduce ladies first, Natalie Roberts. Natalie Roberts is of social strategies, right? Mm -hmm. Social strategies. Um, you guys haven't checked it yet. I will send in the, the website here yet. Later, um, Natalie will explain to us what that social strategies is. And then our man here, man of the hour, David Tam. I think some of our LCAs already know you, David, because also, I don't know if they know this yet, but David Tam and his team, he's from Cast Services. Cast Services just did that amazing website for our founder, Tristan Ahumada. Mm. And it's not live yet, but when it's it goes live, gosh, it's, it's amazing, beautiful. Okay. Take, take this cue now, David and Natalie, uh, you know, uh, we'll be discussing the home construction trends for 2021, right? So what are we learning today? Absolutely. Thank you for the introduction. And lab code agents, uh, thanks again for having us. So I've got one of my favorite people in the world, Natalie Roberts here. Um, I connected with Natalie, gosh, what, a couple of years ago. And it's kind of like the yin to my yang. I'm used to dealing with lab code agents, um, large producing real estate teams, brokerages, all the way down to single agents. And I found Natalie is my other half when it comes to new construction. So she is the absolute expert when it comes to uh, new construction insights, relationships, trends in the market. And so what I wanted to do is, this is the first time she's ever been to lab code agents to share any of the information um, that she's an expert on. And so we may do another one of these depending on the feedback from the group. But Natalie, thank you so much for coming here and sharing some of the trends and new construction as well as some of the insights You know, you, we were talking about yesterday that I think are gonna blow some minds here at Blackfoot Agents. So thank you. Oh, I'm honored. And uh, to David's point, everyone, it's really a synergy that goes on. The more that I find we share from the home building side and the more we learn from the broker, realtor, agent side, the more that we're able to align and A, how to sell more homes how we communicate and how we move forward in an emerging culture, right? It's been an evolution um, beginning with COVID and how that's really transpired and transmitted to how we're building homes, how we're selling homes, how we're hearing our ages, how we're hearing what the trends are. And so David, I'm gonna do a quick share screen. Yeah. And in that, if you guys bear with me for one quick moment, um, we're gonna switch you guys over to presentation style. Um, all right, let's just go from here. Um, essentially, when we, David and I came together, what we looked at was, you know, what are the new trends coming out? And most importantly, how as agents do you work with home builders? A lot of times, uh, internally, it can be a very, um, a very close knit community. And so that backs into who I am and where I come from. Um, and in that, uh, I come from the internal home building world. So I worked for small builders, I worked for large builders, I worked for national and then North American. Uh, everything from, I'll give a quick story, David said to put a funny photo in, I think the story might be even more funny. I made the transition from government marketing when I moved to Texas about 15 years ago. And in that, I had no idea how to build a home. I thought, well, how, how can I possibly go in and market a home if I don't know how to build it? So I walked in the door, I said, great, I am so honored to get the job, put me out in construction and teach me. And I did. I spent three months in construction, working in the field, understanding that there are a million moving parts in every single home that gets built. So as agents and realtors, imagine when you get frustrated or imagine when your buyer gets frustrated. Think of that every time. There are one million moving parts in every single new home. 
if not plus or minus. So in that, um, I really developed an intimate knowledge with how a home is built. I then moved from there and spent three months in on-site sales. And that was to understand an agent psyche, a buyer, and how that all cohesively came together, understanding construction. So I went through that and then I eventually came out on the marketing side. And on the marketing side, I took that knowledge that I had been given and that I had seen firsthand. And I really chose to approach a consumer market and realtors in a way that I believe that they should be spoke to. A couple of years in, I moved over and I uh, decided to go on my own and start a new home construction marketing consulting company. And now I stand in a space with builders and developers across North America and understanding who their buyer is, how their buyer wants to be uh, spoke to, and then down to how do we design this product and how do we present this product to the consumer market and realtors. So that's my quick David unexpected story. Yeah. Great. It's great. Well, and I mean, I just want to, for the lab coat agents audience really quick, if you haven't already gleaned, like this is the, the Oracle when it comes to intelligence in the business space. So I'm constantly asking questions. You know what I mean? I'm sending emails at three in the morning. Hey, what do we do with this certain situation? What I have found over the last three years and especially since COVID is there is a massive disconnect between the real estate agent and the new home builder. And, and what I've found is, you know, the agents do things that the builders can't and that are not their strong suits. But the opposite is true. The home builders can do things that the agent cannot, right? And so together we can really come to better to better serve, right, the client, the actual home purchaser by working with your home builder. So Natalie's going to share a whole bunch of information about that. But I just wanted to throw that out there so people can understand the purpose of this, right? Right. And, and you're spot on, David. When we think of that, you know, a lot of times you look at the good and the bad and then where do we merge together? And so David and I, our goal on this front end is to begin to build that bridge for how do I work with home builders? How do home builders think? Why do I always feel as a realtor or an agent that, you know, I'm, I'm a nuisance or maybe I'm in the way and you're really not. That's the beautiful part is you are such a cohesive part of the building process, of the sales process, and of the closing process, that as an agent, whether you're new or you're experienced, you really can dig into that and understand how you can become an asset of home builders and how in turn that serves your client and it puts more money in your pocket. Totally, love it. Yeah. Please, please teach us, Natalie. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't think all of us know how to, I've seen that, I've seen that in the group. There's always been, a disconnect between the home builders and the agents. And then I think it was earlier this year, there were a lot of memes about how expensive the, the lumber, <laughs> the lumber has become. Yes. So yeah, please. Uh, material costs, I think we all know, and we can kind of drive through that when we talk about Sandra, you know, the whole, the holistic approach, right? And, and what yeah. everyone's experiencing both as an agent or a builder or an onsite and how that all flows with material costs, labor costs, expectations on build time. So Great, great yeah. point. Thank you. Yeah. So in that, you know, when we look at builders, we look at four main categories, right? What is their culture? As an agent, I'm walking in that door and the more aligned and the more in-depth and knowledge I am for Builder X's culture, are they upbeat and fun? Are they very serious? You know, go down into those things and really start to understand the culture because then you understand the approach and you understand the workflow. Um, when we go into culture, we understand process. You know, does Builder A, is there a process that as an agent coming in, if you don't register on that first visit with the Smiths, are you going to be on that contract? Some builders have very strict policies about that. So the more that you're aligning and you're understanding both culture and process, the more from the beginning you become an asset to that builder and an advocate of both your buyer and the builder. You become that central hub. And that's really what builders are looking for. They're looking for advocates. They're looking for partners. So uh, what we suggest is dig it, understand that. And then the key component, and I stress this for everyone, understand the product. Every builder has a different 
unique market position. Is this builder a green builder? Are they a healthy air home filtration system builder? Are they a production builder? And it is a, it's kind of a massive, here we go, we're gonna hit that affordability level. And what you see is what you get. So really dig in and then understanding what type of product they offer, understand what their build times are. Is this a builder that you're going to experience a six, a 12 or an 18 month build time? And then setting that expectation with your buyers on how to proceed throughout that timeline and with what their expectations are. Last thing I say to everyone is get out in the community, understand the community, understand the area. What are the tax rates? What are the school systems? Um, what is the level that they're offering within that community? What are the amenities? And how does that align with your buyers as they're coming in? What you all will find is everything starts to become a flow. And that's going to be my word today, David, is flow. <laughs> uh, Sandra as well, we were talking about the flow before our, uh, we jumped on the call. But once you're in that flow and you've, you've absorbed what that culture is, what their process is, how their product is presented, and then where they're stationed in the market and in the community, you begin to align and you begin to be viewed as a partner and expanding their brand, their sales, and your business. Love it. That's fantastic. Got it. Okay. But I, we're all taking notes of this. So culture, knowing the product and the communities. Yeah. Communities are key too, and I'm, I'm going to preface that uh, product and communities are going to be our next main drive as we go throughout everything. This is the fun part, guys. This is where we start to see um, a, a, an emerging trend coming out uh, directly from COVID. What did, yeah. what did we all do, right? Sandra, what did you do when COVID hit? We all went, oh my gosh, I can't leave my home. 89% of our time is now spent in the home. That is a significant increase from pre-COVID. Big Correct. deal, right? Yeah. And so when we looked at that internally uh, in the home building world, we had to start addressing what the needs are of this um, new, new, new culture, this new buying process. Um, and some of the highlights we put down here, as far as new home trends, um, we can dive into this further. David will tell you it's a lot. And there, um, there is much behind the psychology in each choice that we go over. Zoom rooms, they're huge, they're huge. People no longer have a home office, they have a Zoom room. And that Zoom room is uh, everything from how your electrical is upgraded to what systems you're putting in. Do we have a drop down big screen? Am I having multiple screens so I can absorb the news while I'm watching, you know, what, whatever, and then I'm working. They're becoming uh, more of the experience that we're all having right now interactive, immersive, and part of our everyday lives at home during work. Exercise rooms are replacing um, flex rooms. Flex rooms have been used you know, off and on for different purposes. What we're finding now is, um, David, you might jump in here. Some people <laughs> are choosing exercise rooms over any flex space or bonus room. Yeah. Totally. I mean, like we, the house that I'm building right now, it's exactly that. We chose to want something a little bit smaller. I, I don't really care about having some massive mansion, but I'm going to have an exercise space. I'm going to have a dedicated Zoom place. I'm going to have a dedicated place for my indoor garden. And most of my peers of, you know, similar age groups, right, are doing the exact same thing. So absolutely. And I, tell me about the front porch thing, though, because this is fascinating. <laughs> This is um, quite possibly my most favorite. Uh, I will share with everyone on bias because I have a front porch. <laughs> so <laughs> let's all go back, right? Imagine that pre-COVID and then when, when our world started to change, we're home. Um, we're nervous. We're a little set apart from our friends and our family and we're feeling disconnected. What, what we're seeing is we're tapping into that and we're understanding that even in a pandemic and as we come out, 
a front porch gives us just enough space to start to re-engage in our community and re-engage with our neighbor. You know, 10 months ago, here's a, a fun story for everyone. My, uh, my community here in Austin, Texas, we all have front porches and uh, we chose every night, David is, is going to get a kick out of this. Um, I'm sorry, every Friday to go outside and we would howl and it would start on our front porch and it would reverberate and it would catch on throughout about five to six blocks. What did that mean? That meant that during a time that was um, high stress and we didn't know where we were going, we were connected. So all of this leads back to connection. Front porches, they lead back to community. They, they take us back to that Norman Rockwell painting where we feel home and we feel connected and we have friends, even though we may not be able in the moment to be right next to each other. I love it. I love yeah, that. Yeah, kind of a Go ahead. Yeah, new way, new way of like, do I say new way of so socialization with your with your yeah. neighbor right yeah. and from a distance that Sandra you've nailed it from a distance where even if I am hesitant to go you know close with others I'm mm -hmm. still spaced enough that I have that security but I still have that important connection and community right right got it so, and then we, we're gonna move real quick. I, I put with intention, the evolution <laughs> begins. This is the fun. This is the mind blowing um, emergence of how builders and developers are tapping in and understanding and communicating with our buyers, with our agents. What does that mean? That means grounding roots. Uh, for those that don't know what grounding is, um, grounding is, uh, Every day I go outside and I spend 20 minutes with my feet on the earth. And I do that so that I can reconnect. It's part of a meditation, right? Which is also a collective emerging trend. We're reconnecting with self, we're reconnecting with community. And now we're reconnecting in our home with grounding rooms. These are being integrated. Um, we have a builder here just outside of Austin. And part of the features within this home were a grounding room. That home sold before it was even built. It sold just on the concept. And then to the point, your average cost of home in Austin, Texas is about $525,000. That breaks down to roughly what? 250 a square foot. This home with the grounding room, and I'm gonna jump one more, and a hydroponic wall sold for less than the average median price in our market. So you're getting you're getting a lot more newer features for a lot less. Yes. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So and we're addressing attainability. We're addressing uh -huh. how 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 we want to live in our homes now, at, from uh -huh. from a home building standpoint, and we're doing it at a cost that isn't exorbitant, right? It's not through the roof. I'm not paying a million dollars. What we're really saying, Sandra and David, is that homebuyers can and should have these things for a healthy lifestyle that taps in and meets what their current needs are. Interesting. Now, Interesting. what kind of adoption are you seeing from like, because I, I this was Seriously, we talked about this previously, but I never even wrapped my head around what the hell a grounding room was. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> this is the first time I've heard it. <laughs> yeah, totally. And well, and for for the lab code agents audience here, as as real estate agents, have you, if you're not like familiar with some of these next generation cutting edge new building construction techniques, I mean, these are things that you need to envelop into your portfolio and knowledge base so you can speak to them appropriately because over the course of the next five years, you're going to start to have people asking about these things. You know what I mean? And then to be able to have a resource, i.e. Natalie, to be able to say, hey, this is where they are and how they are and how you can advocate for them. All that does is make you more money and better serve the home buyer, right? So Natalie, thanks again for being here, by the way. <laughs> yeah, thank honor. you. Yeah, it's my honor, guys. And, and David, spot on. Um, we we bring this to you in order to expand and evolve, right? So that you are keeping up with the home building industry. And you're not only keeping up, you're ahead. 
Totally. Because most, of, most don't know, right? This information, um, while it's trickling in, Sandra asked an earlier question and she said, is this just 2021? No, this is sprinkled into 2021, but what it is, it's a catapult into what and where you will see new home trends emerging over the course of the next decade. Got it. Yeah, I got it. Under I understand that better now. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And um, the one other touch point for, for all the agents that I wanted to bring in, communities, right? This isn't just home building. This is developers. Developers are, are positioning and aligning side by side as they, they most often do with home builders. So when you're digging in and you're understanding culture and process and product and community, mm -hmm. step out and go experience the developer. Understand that that the Welcome Center, as we traditionally knew it, the stoic kind of institutionalized feel when I walk in and I'm being sold, that's no longer. Um, there are a few communities in, uh, in Austin and the greatest greater surrounding areas, Colorado, North Carolina, Florida, California, I'm seeing this, where it is an experience. Whisper Valley is the country's first uh, net zero geothermal community. Wow. So everything is run off geothermal, right? There's another one, David, we didn't anticipate. Um, the homes have solar panels. It's really, that was their goal, right? But the, the community center was so thoughtfully planned and programmed that as an agent, when I walk in with my buyers, mm -hmm. I'm experiencing a hands-on touch and feel um, education as to how we got there and the why behind it. So developers are really digging into the why. Um, what we're seeing in San Marcos, there's a community, Mystic Canyon, that's getting ready to come out. Mm -hmm. And in that community, um, and I do this, Sandra, David will tell you, and everyone on the call, I get goosebumps when I know things are, are good. Uh, and part of that, with a community, you have a groundbreaking and you've got all, you know, the suits out there and everybody has their gold shovel and that's so yesterday. This particular community is emerging with a earthing ceremony. So, earthing? Yeah, isn't that neat? <laughs> what does that mean exactly? Yeah, what, yeah. Yeah, what is it? So what that means is um, instead of having that traditional big machinery and, and municipality and um, all the chambers out there, we're gonna have those people and we're gonna have the realtors and we're gonna have the consumers. But what we're going to do is we're going to intentionally walk into this we have branded yoga mats, branded water bottles, and you're gonna walk through the community on the dirt Mm. respecting oh. understanding where the idea was born from and what it is born of mm. and that is a respect for the land a respect for the people buying um, a new synergy in how we come together and um, the plan and this is uh, hopefully coming up in the next month or two is to really connect as a community through Irving in the community so we can move forward and set the tone and set the standard for how communities are built moving forward. Interesting. Wow, that's very, uh, very not 1990s and 2000s, right? <laughs> it, it, yes, right. I love it. Right. But it's like we're going back. It's now we're in a world of technology. Most of us are in front of our computers, our phones. And, and so this is kind of like a new thing to do right you take away those digital and just like go back to the roots of really feeling the earth right mm -hmm. and connecting with each other like like connecting with each other really that community connection however i do have to um our next slide and when we jump over on where we're going as well um as far as additional types of housing sandra it's going to blend technology with connection. What does that mean? Oh, okay. That means immersive experiences coming out, right? So uh, as an example, Genesis Homes will be releasing um, the evolution of manufactured housing. Manufactured housing, I'm curious if we can get a few people in the chat box. 
when you hear manufactured housing, what comes to your mind? Small. <laughs> <laughs> Go, David. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I mean, so like, it, that's, uh, I don't mean to be biased, lower quality, mass produced, you know what I mean? Like underserved, struggling communities. That's usually, that's what, I mean, to be truthful, my father li lived in a trailer, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's totally okay. And, and that's the, you know, preconception I have. What about somebody else in here? They say, yeah, S2A homes. homes. Okay. S to a homes. Yeah. Yeah. And mostly, uh, mostly from my experience when I was an ISA before manufactured homes, these are not the the type of homes that lenders would like to, uh, yeah. right? Yeah. Do mortgage for. Mm -hmm. This is often the hard, the hardest to get a loan for. From my experience when I was an ISA before, that was like what, four yeah. years ago? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bonnie yeah. said pre-made homes. Now some good quality homes are being made now. Newer technology, okay. Mm -hmm. So tell us I, more, Natalie. Tell us, tell us more. Yeah, I'm tell us more, please. You all are affirming um, every every bit of a mass perception of manufactured housing. Here's where the exciting news comes in. Skyline Champion um, and Mark Yost, who is their CEO. Mm -hmm. about two years ago was in front of Congress. And we quoted him in this particular slide because it's vastly important to where we're gonna go, right? We need to break down barriers to affordable housing by increasing the focus on manufactured housing. What does that mean? It's exciting, attainability. What we, um, and I, I will disclaim, I, I have been honored to work alongside both Skyline and Genesis Homes for about 19 months with David and with our other partners. Yeah. And what we were tasked with is exactly what you guys have just shared. It's a trailer. I can't get a loan. Yeah. It's a, you know, all <laughs> this stuff. And, and it's a, it almost aligns with a negative perception and connotation mm. to the word, right? So how do we move away from that? That's where we dug into. We move away by redesigning product. And what you see on the left slide, does that look like a manufactured home? No. <laughs> it, it is. But is that? <laughs> it is? Wow. It is. <laughs> wow. Right? It looks, like a, it looks like just any single family home. Looks like a beachfront villa. I mean, come on. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Where is that? <laughs> that is, and um, ironically, that home is in Florida. And that is a manufactured home. That home <gasps> is set on a foundation. That home has garages. That home doesn't have any or some, but most for the most part, will completely leave your perception and your understanding of old school manufactured housing into what is now, what is the evolution, right? So wow. when we blend technology, like you said, Sandra, what we've done is undergone um, a massive amount of research, uh, product planning, branding, and how all those came together, you'll see at the very bottom of the slide is, is the emergence of what will be the new Genesis Homes. They are a sister company of Skyline Champion. In this, the product that you all will see coming out will stand side by side with stick built traditional housing in every way, if not exceeding it at a more attainable cost Ready, Sandra, drum roll, that has been backed by Fannie Mae and will receive a 30-year conventional loan. They are well, a FHA. <laughs> well, well, that is really new. The, this makes tugs on my heartstrings, right? Because I know that like we, we have a housing crisis here in the United States. And, and it's you can see it just by driving through any major metropolis in the entire country. Right, and it breaks my heart. And what Skyline is doing, Skyline Champion is bringing a solution to the market that's cost affordable, <laughs> you know what I mean, at scale. Which is, I mean, guys, this is the first time in the country that we have an option to actually solve this problem, right? And to have you at the forefront, Natalie, with Skyline is fantastic. Be previewing wow. this. At the same time, though, wake up, lab code agents, like wake up and start educating yourselves on what's coming down the pike because there's a massive amount of revenue 
tied to this, to be able to advocate for the products and understand the products. And Natalie, I got to go back though. Like when we're talking about how to start those conversations mm -hmm. with your new construction partners, like when we get to the Q and A section, I'm going to pepper you with questions. How do I even start that conversation? You know, because I feel like a lot of the lab code agents that are in here watching this or are going to be watching their courting are like scratching their heads yeah. because they haven't done, right? I don't know about you, but like my, my high-end real estate clients that are doing 50, 100, 1,000, 2,000 transactions, they have their Rolodex packed with new construction partners. And anytime there's a new development or a new rollout like this, they're the first person that gets called, right? Mm -hmm. So let's circle back on that when we get to the very end, but keep going. This is magnificent. I love it. Sure. And you just made a great point. And, and, and I, I want to make sure that we emphasize this point. The more that you do the four first slides, right? Community, mm -hmm. product, culture, okay. process. The more to what David just said, you're going to get called first. You're going to be told about that emerging product coming out, that community that's coming out. You're in the know by being present and showing up and putting in the work. And in turn, your business expands tenfold. Got it. Yeah, and the, and the, the company will trust you, right? Because you've done all those four slides first. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. Got exactly. it, got it. So build that. Sorry, go ahead. I know it's the same. Build that relationship with the with a builder, right? Yeah, do. I mean, and you know what? That's great, Sandra. Build that relationship with a builder. Start small. Choose one. Say, I know that this builder is aligned with where I'm going with my business model as an agent in this market. Choose that builder. Take and dive head first in, go in, understand it. And then you'll begin to, by default, understand the bricks and the foundation of most builders and then expand out. But don't overwhelm yourself. It is, um, I know the presentation itself is a lot to, to take <laughs> in and understand. <laughs> got it, got it. So when we look at the evolution and manufactured housing, and we look at the leaders coming out like Skyline Champion, um, they are the largest manufactured housing uh, producer in North America. So they have a very strong presence on many levels in many markets. Right now, we're just focusing on the uh, manufactured homes. Um, we'll, we'll fold in some of the other fun items that, that they've come up with and that will be coming out to the market. But yeah. attainability is our number one issue, right? Yes. I go back. Yes. Austin, Texas, right? Average, average, average median home price is five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. In that, we have now priced out a minimum of forty-five percent of this market that cannot afford. And this is, and I'm, I, I'm. I do have clients all over North America. I'm gonna focus on Austin because Austin is slowly, we all know Elon's coming. He's yeah. bringing his headquarters <laughs> here. He's bringing yeah. the plan here. We've got Facebook. Austin, as somebody who's lived here 15 years, doesn't look like the Austin I know. The, the incomes, household incomes are going up, but they're not going up quick enough and there's not enough housing. So the more that we dig into the, the new emerging housing, the more that as agents and as supporters of this industry, we allow ourselves to start to provide this for everyone. Attainability. Um, Bill, another key point with manufactured housing, while materials and labor have reduced or reduced kind of the strength of build times, meaning they're a tad bit longer. We're still able to, from contract to close, we're looking at about a nine month period. Okay. That is under new home construction currently. Specifically, if you're building, if you have clients in a semi-custom or a custom, you're at a 14 to 18 month time frame. Right. So you're bringing in a product that's superior, aligned with single family. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. bringing it to them in a build time that they're able to get in quicker. And then when you look at the design, like Sandra said, look at the design on the left. We have more and we're happy to share some of the new videos coming out. Yeah. Um, feel free to go on YouTube. Genesis has quite a few virtual tours. Um, yeah. And then we've got some more, but you know, your design 
this is not your grandparents trailer in South Florida on the beach. True. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah. And that is true. Finance. Finance. We, um, we've got a Fine. lot of strength right now in um, our partnership, both with the federal government, with Fannie, and with, with municipalities uh, across America. There are monthly calls going on behind the scenes that we're addressing this and we're understanding. I'll give a quick example in Seattle or Washington. Um, was on a call a couple of weeks ago. And in that call, what they're facing out there is not only an attainability, I believe the median home price out there is about 725, uh, which is astronomical, right? And um, we've, we've priced everyone out, um, the majority out at that point. But in that, on top of that, there's a lot of regulations. Um, if you're building and your impervious coverage goes over a certain point, there's a lot of it, uh, environmental coming on, right? And these builders get, they get just tapped on and on that they can't bring you a home at an attainable price because they're, we're not working or we're hoping to work in better correlation with the government. But in that, the solution that's come out is let's go ahead and start taking some of our federal dollars and let's develop programs that incorporate ADU, accessory dwelling units, into our single family housing tracks, right? Good, good. So, Skyline is doing that. Genesis Homes is doing that. We have a project in Sacramento, right outside in Oroville. Um, that project, the entire project, not only do you have this amazing evolution of manufactured housing, you now have ADU units as an option with every home. So now we're giving you the multi-generational living. We're addressing that need. And then we're addressing passive income. Let's build your wealth. Let's get you up there. Let's move you through this and into your second home. So attainability, you're growing. We're aligning with the government. We're, we're understanding that our baby boomer parents are moving back in or our college age child, you know, the college might be shut down. So you can live in the back and still have your sense of independence. Or I'm a millennial and I want to go ahead and Airbnb that out. There you go. Yeah. So make money. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, my, like my peer group, it's the same. Hey, got student loan, right? That's uh, got a bunch of debt and I can't get into a traditional 700,000 or six or 500,000. Mm -hmm. Like this is the perfect example and it's scalable. I could do these all over the country if I wanted to, three, four or five of them. And then when I hear that from like a real estate agent perspective, I mean, that's just dollar signs all across. You know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's a novel trend setting idea, which is fantastic. I, I want to learn more. Keep going. <laughs> All right. And then finance will just, I, I, uh, I will disclaim, I am not a finance person. Um, I, I in no way represent any mortgage um, company or quotes, but in that there is, like we discussed, there is FHA loans available. There are the 30 year. Where I want to tie that through and we received some clarification this morning. Let's say you do um, go and you're buying this new evolution of manufactured housing and you've got that ADU. That ADU can be wrapped into your 30 year loan. So you're wow. not to. Yeah. Very this cool. is really, yeah, this is really remarkable. It's really new. It's like good news. Thank you for sharing this, Natalie. Yeah. This is something, this is something our lab code agents can really take advantage of, right, David? Well, I would, I should sure hope so, right? If not, I mean, yeah, the old saying, if you're not getting better, you're getting left behind. Well, and, and I think this is really going to be cool for the home builders as well, because I, I think a lot of the home builders think of real estate agents and they're like, well, NAR says the average real estate agent does less than one transaction a month, 10 in a year. And they on average work 30 to 32 hours a week. It's a part-time job. But by seeing Natalie here in Lab Code Agents advocating for the real estate agents that are working their asses off to try and better serve the clients, it is a perfect fit. You know what I mean? So I, Natalie, I think we're probably gonna have to do version two of this. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Yeah. Yeah. What I'm thinking will happen after this webinar, uh, there will be a lot of Google searches for Natalie, for sure. <laughs> <Totally> <laughs> that will happen. Natalie's <laughs> <laughs> so get ready. Right. I welcome it. Nat, you know, this is the start guys. This is the start of, of a new connection between builders Realtors, brokers, developers, manufactured housing, 
you know, all of that, it's all coming together. And that's our goal. Our goal is all of this comes together and who benefits at the end? Our client. Yeah. The who consumer. do we do clients, this for? Yes. Our client. Yep. Yep. Love it. So there you go. And then we, uh, one quick thing I did want to um, tag back to, David, you made a great point and it triggered. Um, we are seeing uh, from the new home construction side across the country, uh, so it tapped into, again, Florida, North Carolina, Texas, Arizona, and California builders, architects, and developers. On the building side, uh, it was a unanimous response that we are returning to traditional commissions. Pre as COVID hit, builders started to retract and they, you know, not knowing if we had not only the land, did we have the inventory? We're fearing this material pushback and labor costs. You started to see build, builders retract and go, okay, we're gonna lower our commissions because we've got to make sure that we have the product and the availability um, that we can keep moving forward. That is ending. Builders are returning not only to the traditional 3%, they are starting to reintroduce the additional bonus structures. Ooh. So that, yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> so that means that um, I remember when I was internal, right? We would look at, and a great point as well, guys, we would look at a list every six months. We would say, who continues to sell our product? Mm -hmm. And we would pick that list and we would take that list and we would create a specific program that every past that third home, every home that they sold, we tacked on an extra 10 grand. Wow. Wow. <laughs> David, we're both wow. I mean, all the agents out there, they're like, hey, I'm doing 10 transactions. That's uh, 100 grand. That's <laughs> mm -hmm. And this is just a program, you know, I personally rolled this one out. So, and it varies. You'll have um, a lot where you come in and let's say that it's in a less than desirable and maybe we're having a little bit of a problem moving this particular inventory, which right now isn't happening as much, but we would put a, a, five, a three to 10 K bonus on that sale. So those are starting to return. You're seeing builders and that's a part of the builder sentiment and the confidence that we're seeing in this explosive real estate market that we continue to be in. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I have, I have so many questions, but I, <laughs> I want to, I want to get through your slides first. And then if we can open it up for a Q and a, because I know yes. questions in the chat as well. Let's yeah, there's some questions there in the chat. Okay. One quick thing, and this one won't. I just wanted to bring at the end, um, you know, always end on a high note, right? End on that fun, oh my goodness, what's coming next? Yeah. As if we have yes. already gone there. <laughs> yes. What We're excited. Gonna, right? And what you're going to see um, and what we are seeing, ADUs. Don't think of an ADU as you're used to. That photo on the top left or the left rail that you see over here, that is a local Austin uh, custom home builder who has expanded. That's an ADU unit. Wow. That is not, you know, the, so I wanted to show this to everyone so that they can understand, hey, what is an ADU, right? It's, it's yes. a smaller dwelling unit, independent of the home, but still on the same lot. Mm -hmm. People think she shit. Right, we all remember that commercial about the she shed and all this. Uh, yeah, Sandra, this is the new she shed. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so ADUs are really expanding. Um, Blue Horse Build and Design, Building and Design, did the one on the left, and what you're going to see is that is glass, and that is it's it, it it's the outside inside again. Return to the dirt, collective. How we need to connect, and. Not only, let's say, I don't want to Airbnb it out. My parents don't, you know, they've gone and decided to travel the world and my child is at college, tucked away safe. What a pretty amazing third workspace is that, right? You've got windows, you've got all that. So this is what we're seeing emerge from design on an ADU standpoint. On the right, you're going to see a barn dominium. Uh, I have a mild obsession right now with these to share with everyone, only because, again, it's respecting, we're really listening and we're going, we want 
we're not really leaning towards mansions anymore. You still have a select part of the market, but David said, right? I'm a millennial. David, this is you, not me. And <laughs> I can't claim that stake anymore. But in that, you know, think of that mindset and think of land, right? We're all starting to buy land. That is a trend that's happening, guys. And people are moving out and you are seeing that because of the pandemic and because of that reconnection. Barn dominiums start, this is, and again, this is a per market, but barn dominiums start at $188,000. They are just what you think. They're called barn does as well. It is a barn that has been redesigned and is that open concept living space um, that can be put on land and isn't anywhere near your traditional home, but still with all the really um, crucial elements that make a home feel like a home. I would highly suggest get on TikTok, get on YouTube, Google it. You're going to see some videos that will blow your mind across the country for both ADUs, manufactured housing, um, and barn dose. So, love it. I want one. Nice. Me too. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so, um, Sandra, we got what, what, 10 minutes or so? Yeah, it was got 10 minutes. Yeah, but. Natalie is presenting so much here that, you know, I'm, I'm like you, I want to look at all the slides she has prepared for us. So oh. I think we're still, yeah, still, we're still That's got it, to actually. Yeah. The next one is just, there you go. Oh, perfect. oh. So <laughs> <laughs> there are some questions. Yes, let's do it. So for everybody that's watching live, right, we've got a bunch of people in the room right now, comments in the Zoom, in Facebook, and then Sandra. Yes. Or filter those over to me. Natalie, mm -hmm. I'm just going to engage you because I have questions. Now, let's say a real estate agent, whether they're new to the business or they've been doing it for 20 years and they've got an established business, if they want to really open the conversation and take action today by engaging new construction in their market, what would be the first step? Are they going to pick up the phone? Are they going to drive by the office? Are they going to do a little bit of research? Are they going to contact the Rolodex? What would you recommend? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good question. Fun. Yeah. i um, I would go back to where is my business model going? I would start with the I. Okay. What is my business model? What is my market position? Who are my clients? And how am I going to align that with the research, second step, mm -hmm. that I've done in identifying a builder in my area that meets those criteria? Got it. Right. So it starts with... It starts with you, like starts with you first as an agent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Before you even go out there and start working with a builder. It right? doesn't by default, Sandra, what it's going to allow everyone is to sit down and get very clear about what mm -hmm. their business model is and who they represent and who Perfect. their clients are. So it could almost be that kind of let's pause, let's let's read, let's understand. And then let's align this with a home builder. And then Dave, my, the next step I would highly recommend, don't call, please don't call guys. Um, these oh, on-site don't, they, uh, they, these on-site um, sales agents and managers and professionals, they get a million calls. They are dealing with 20 buyers that have 20 questions and concerns and you know, they're just, it's a constant go. And when you go, Go in a way that I have, you've toured the community. You've got a feel for the product. So before you go to that agent, tour the community, tour the website, tour the, tour the surrounding area, understand your purpose in going in and then coming in in a way of how can we partner mm -hmm. so that my clients needs are being met and I'm meeting your needs as a, as a builder during the process so that I can become an asset for you and then collectively. Interesting. That is so great. That is so great. That makes me think of something. So what I think what, what builders may not realize is that, that like according to NAR, the most recent statistics in November was 91% of people that used a real estate agent would recommend that real estate agent for repeat business into their family and friends. So by Leveraging a let relationship with multiple new construction entities in your market, or even just one, that creates an infinite business flow for the new construction entity, whether that's Skyline or it's somebody else, right? 
Um, but then you as the agent appear not only as the expert in the space because you can advocate for the new construction, but you're bringing new business and everybody's getting paid. Not only that, like the situation for me, I chose to build a house because I couldn't find one that had the stuff that I wanted on the market that wasn't like 20 years old and dilapidated. You know what I mean? So no, there wasn't a grounding room, but I'm going to ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's, this is uh, kind of a <clears throat> seeds for some ideas for the lab coat agents, you know, audience, as well as potentially new construction individuals that want to watch this recording. So that's really, really helpful. Um, where have you seen it go wrong? Natalie, like, give me, give me a train wreck story of where, <laughs> you know, because sometimes you learn more from the mistakes than you do from the victories. Yeah. Yep. Number one, the number one first misstep that could be made okay. is not going with your buyers. Really? Why? The, that will um, kind of driving back into a home builder psyche. Um, if, if a buyer if comes out and I'm an on-site sales agent and I've toured them, I've spent hours with them, we've got them a quote, we've kind of worked through, you know, what do you want in this home and what are those design selections going to cost? Yeah. And then an, uh, I get a call and a realtor and agent says, hey, Susie Smith came out. That's my client. Got it. It's a massive uh, disconnect. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Right. We we've already we we've, we've broken that initial partnership. Um, the best practice, the mm -hmm. good of that would be, oh, you know, I'm busy and I I have a busy life. We all do. Yeah. Call the agent and say, call the on site and say, hey, this is Natalie Roberts. I've got you know my child's playing soccer tonight and I can't make it, but. I've got this client coming out. Here's what they need. Here's their price point. Here's what they're looking at. Here's their time frame that they're moving. Right. You've begun to create the partnership. Love it. Got it. Got and it. That, that's empirically important as we see. We I kind of feel like we've got fat, dumb, and happy over the last, you know, 18 months. It's like we've got all, you know, the, the inventory issues and all this kind of well, that, that's gonna slow down. We're already see, starting to see prices fall back down, interest rates, you know, creep a little bit. And so as that shifts, and the, I feel like most new construction builders are gonna want those different lines out in the pond to be bring them business, and then all they have to do is just advocate for their product. And if it's already been done on the front end, that's fantastic. What do you think about like, um, you know, communities, events, co-marketing? What are other things that agents can do to stand out from, you know, the other real estate agents that are trying to compete for the same business? Any words of wisdom there, Natalie? In Texas, what I tell all of our agents, don't bring tacos. <laughs> <laughs> what can, what can we bring then? <laughs> right? Oh, I love it. Um, Come as the powerful, knowledgeable agent that you are. Come with your knowledge, right? You're both striving for the same thing, which is more clients, um, service and getting these people that you care about and you're going to spend a significant amount of your time with. We always say in home building, when we sell a home and we write that contract and it's signed, we are getting married. We are married for the next 12 to 14 months. So we better get along, right? Yeah. And as agents, you guys are so powerful. You're on the forefront. You, you're reading the nurse information. You're looking at the stats. You understand your market. Share that knowledge. Empower that on site, right? Just like they're going to empower you on how home building works. You two together are are just, you're beyond, right? You, you now can take those strengths and those energies and you can hit the market and reach more consumers, more deals, more sales because you partner. So in that, it's not only bring the knowledge, but David, great point, show up, show up, go. Um, for years, I served on uh, the Home Builders Association of Greater Austin uh, over communications. And then I did a lot with the NAHB. 90% of the success in the network that I currently have is because I showed up to events. I genuinely invested in people. And that means not just showing up and having two cocktails and laughing. It means showing up, maybe making just a, to a tonic with a lime squeezed in and dig into people and say, 
Tell me about you. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your life. Let the relationship unfold because those relationships that you show up into the home building world in are going to flourish and you're planting seeds that will continue to grow down the pipeline. Great, great advice. That's fantastic. Natalie, I, I want to say not only thank you for being here, for sharing all of this. Again, there's no money changing hands here. We do this for free for lab code agents because we love you as a group. Yeah. We're trying to bring in experts to make you better. Why? Because there is going to be a consolidation in the real estate space. NARA is saying that there are a large proportion of real estate agents are going out of business in the next 36 months. There's trillions of dollars of capital pouring into the largest segment of the U.S. economy, which is real estate, right? And so, and a big tip of the hat to Skyline for taking a stance, planning your feet and trying to make a difference and change and fix the housing crisis in the United States. More people need to be doing that, okay? So if you wanna learn more about any of this, please get in through the Facebook page, the YouTube page, ask questions. We've got contact information for Natalie there as well. I can provide yeah. more if you wanna to go to cast.services. That's our website, but again, bright light on Skyline and Natalie, thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Sandra, do you have any other questions for the last two minutes here? Yeah, we have the last two minutes. Now, Natalie, I just want to, Betsy here, Betsy, Betsy Ellie, thank you. I think Betsy's from Florida because she has asked that, you know, when you showed earlier that, um, that manufactured home, she mm -hmm. asked if, will that home in Florida survive hurricanes? Oh, great yeah. question. Thank you for that. Uh, there have been several studies done and the, the manufactured housing product that you're seeing in Florida, um, there is a very wide market in Florida and you're seeing a lot of those initial emerging trends. Okay. Oh, but Betsy, you know what? She's in camera, uh, but it's the same. It's going to be the same cross country. So, you know, uh, what my bad seeing, Betsy. No, it's okay. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes, and they are not only, um, it's structural redundancy, it is hurricane proof, it is backed by the government. Wow. They understand oh. that some other products will not. <laughs> wow and, yeah, and she, yes <laughs> yeah and betsy That's um, if you google or if you go to skyline champion or uh if you go on fannie mae's site there are several resources to read as to you know the the how the homes are built how they're proofed against uh weather elements so check it out awesome nice Perfect. nice okay thank you thank you for that natalie you know we I myself have so many questions, but we're running out of time here. So again, Natalie, thank you so much. David, thank you for bringing Natalie. We wouldn't know Natalie without you, David. So um, I just want to, I just want to tell you again, guys, that for, I know, I, uh, I know a lot of us have questions here. So please reach out to Natalie Roberts. You can Google her, we can Google her website, social strategies um, and all her contact number. And when you play this recording again later, we, Natalie already showed her contact information, right? David, David is from Cast Services. Um, you can easily Google the, the Cast Services as well, and they have tons of services there. So uh, I just want to end this this webinar also to remind everyone that tomorrow we have a great webinar as well from Street Techs about doubling your business with Facebook ads this holiday season, and that's also 11 a.m. in the Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. So please. Um, check that out as well because that's Facebook ads, right? Um, now, David, Natalie, any any words of wisdom before we go? This been a yeah. this has been a great webinar. Thank you for sharing it yeah. with us, Lab Code Agents. So as we enter the holiday season, I know there's going to be questions for this. We did another one of these, and we had an outpouring of people asking more questions about research, yes. and relationships, Lab Code Agents. If you want a version number two come with questions and then reach out to LCA and we'll go ahead and get that scheduled. Okay? Yeah, please, please tell me, please tell me, message me, DM me, bombard my message so that we can go on for the, to the next webinar. And for everybody who don't know me much yet, Sandra, uh, I like serve as a community manager for our Facebook group, Lab Code Agents. So just DM me or comment on the uh, Facebook Live we have here. So that we can come in with the with the second part of this webinar because this is such a great um, topic here that I I myself learn a new stuff like earthing, 
unearthing the, the grounding room. David is going to have his grounding room. I think I want to have that too. <laughs> okay. I'm going to jump here. So thank you yeah. all. I really thank you. have a great rest of your day. Natalie, thanks again. See thanks. you soon. Bye-bye. All right, bye.